Rarity was often regarded as the least favorite amongst anyone's list of the cartoon. It wasn't for me like Pinkie Pie was, but she admittedly didn't stand out to me as much either like Twilight, Applejack, and Dash did. However, things have massively changed for her since the continuation of Season 2, particularly Sister Who's Social and a few others. Prior to that, she has practically improved her traits as well, such as her admission to being a total drama queen as a running gag, and her exaggerating angered voice. I wasn't too surprised at that, however, because she did have similar humor moments, such as Season 1 with the definition of whining in front of the Diamond Dogs, and many one-liners that managed to gain the internet memes naturally. What makes Rarity an authentic character is just by being who she is. And as it simply shows, every pony's understanding her more. And she is being the character every pony should know in this special episode, Sweet and Elite. Rarity has been given a luxurious stay in Canterlot for a few days, as she plans to assemble a dress for Twilight as a gift for her birthday. At first she's given down talk by a few Canterlot citizens as a class-level prejudice, and it greatly upsets her. Eventually things quickly change as she gets caught up by Fancy Pants, one of the most popular gentle cults in the city, and gains a massive amount of attention which easily enlightens her days. Sadly, she gets pressured between her friends in Ponyville and her dreams of living in Canterlot. So she begins to lie to every pony to hide her true self, and unintentionally make matters worse by having her friends brought to the gala ballroom as a garden party is being held outside. Here we get a lot of missed out fire switcheroos until the moment of confessions begin to strike. At first I thought this was a lesson of never lying to others, and I thought this would have cost the love of her friends. I was skeptical about the outcome at the end too, because I thought her lies managed to benefit her instead of punishing her. But then thinking twice, when she told the truth at the end, she said it in a way in which she had to face the truth to others regardless of her popularity. Fancy Pants was also a very fair character in which he didn't so much as judge any class level at all, and has in fact asked Twilight about the dress by curiosity. This especially helped Rarity out of the predicament she was in. Now that's what I call a gentle cult, not this asshole. Speaking of which, I was quite amazed that several background ponies from Season 1 made brief appearances like Sapphire Shores, Hoity Toity, Prince Douchebag, and Lady Gaga. Shit, sorry, I meant photo finish. So it was nice to see the main six to get their party in the ballroom and have their own fun. In a way, it makes up for the troubles they had at the Gallants in the Season 1 finale, and it felt great. Rarity's attempt to trade back and forth was pretty hilarious and clever at best. I felt a lot of pressure on her as she wore herself out, switching places to another. At the same time, I found it hilarious when she was unaware of the croquet mallet in her mouth, and had no explanation for it afterwards. Uh, what with the croquet mallet? croquet mallet? Duh, the one in your mouth? <laughs> oh, that croquet mallet! So while it didn't jump to me as hard at first, it grew on me over time. But what really sunk into my heart was Rarity's musical number, Becoming Popular, The Pony Every Pony Should Know. I'll be the toast of the town, the girl on the go I'm the type of pony every pony, every pony should know I'll be the one to watch the girl in the flow I'm the type of pony every pony, every pony should know Becoming as popular as popular can be Making my mark, making my mark in high society I'm the belle of the ball, the star of the show They hang on every word that I speak My approving glance is what they all see I'm the creme de la creme, not just another Jane Doe I'm the type of pony every pony should know I heard the song at first, and it was quite catchy, but since work has been working me to death, I didn't have the luxury to hear it more often until now. And when listening to it more and more, I'm not afraid to say this is one of the best songs I've heard from the show so far since Winter Wrap Up. It's so catchy and uplifting to the point of shedding tears of joy. While it does portray a message of showing off and being popular, it simultaneously shows the overall feelings to Rarity's dream. Ever since her appearance in the series, she's always dreamed of living in Canterlot. Coming this far, it feels very achieving. Now, coming from somebody who enjoys Metallica, Bullet, Iron Maiden, Van Halen, Zeppelin, Guns N' Roses, and so on, I feel that's quite saying a lot. But then again, I naturally have an open mind in music in general. So I wouldn't go as far as to call myself a metalhead, but you hopefully catch my drift. I had fun watching this episode. It took some time to digest, but it was a very special one. The humor is easily no exception, especially Pinkie Pie's party cannon and Twilight's dress, which, even to me, it looks cute on her. But the importance is that it enlightens the motivation of Rarity, and she's developing pretty well in this season. 
I also like how this episode dives back to the prejudice themes like vital gossip, but to the more political routes by the level of standards. So since Rarity's been taken care of most, I hope to see more of the other characters achieve their goals. As of now, Sweden Elite is one of my favorite episodes. So until next time, take care, bronies.